So I'm going to look at adding in some scenery just to get some finishing touches on this 3D multiplayer template. And I'm going to do a quick review of the functionality to give you an idea of when and where this template can be useful for you. So as you can see here, I've added a couple assets and our player asset is actually uh, of the same asset type, which is Kenny's assets. So if you guys want to check them out, uh, he's got a really good suite of basic low poly assets that if you want to get your game started, he offers them for you know donations or anything like that free from any fees or anything to use any of his assets. So it's a really good resource if you're looking to start something and just to have maybe a placeholder, if not just use them straight up because they they are pretty nice if uh, if you if you get pretty far into them. So I'm just going to look at adding some of those and then we'll do a quick overview at the end about the functionality that this template has to offer. I think maybe I'm going to stop here. I think this is a good spot. So this template is designed to work in dedicated server mode. However, it can be tailored to work in P2P mode. Uh, right now, this is P2P because I'm just testing locally. But if you wanted to, you could actually deploy this to, you know, a server somewhere. You could build out multiple levels and swap out whatever level you want to load at the current time for your match. It's kind of like a matchmaker setup. Like this game is, I would say, good for small arenas or match style play um, dungeon kind of thing. This setup works really well. Everything is state based. So idle is a state uh, moving is a state uh, jumping and then fall is also a state. So I have like four states kind of hashed out for you guys. If you know, if you want to use that as a starting point, the states are lag compensated. Yeah. So you can see here I have four states idle jump fall which comes after jump or if you just walk off something and then move and i use a state machine to route it all together and synchronize and make sure that those things are um, the states get reconciled when you change them here's the player scene it's pretty straightforward i have a camera input scene here's his character body and we have some animations that are tied into that uh, here's your rollback synchronizer your rollback synchronizer is the properties that you want to make sure have that lag compensation and they are always going to be based off some inputs because uh, that's how this works it the lag compensation uses inputs to make sure that things are correctly synced across all the clients and then it reconciles or corrects any changes that may come back from the server locally uh, so that's what the rollback synchronizer is. I talked about that in past streams. So if you want more details, check those out. And then the tick interpolator just smooths out the properties you want smoothed out. And uh, here's my state machine with the uh, subsequent script attached. I have the four states right now that we're working with. 
and the player input, which handles the you know keyboard and mouse inputs respectively. And then my camera input is just a separate scene with all the individual camera components. So that is the bulk of what this project represents is this player object, the state machines, the NetFox lag compensation using the nodes from NetFox rollback synchronizer and tick interpolator, um, my collision shape, and then the actual mesh is this military mail, which is its own scene. All of your scenes are gonna be under here. I have some network helper scenes that get your uh, net correct network spawned into the game under uh, via these like network manager scripts here. This is going to manage most of the setup for your network, um, adding players to game, removing players to game, handling when a client connects and disconnects. Uh, your e-network is just the actual setting up the multiplayer peers, um, main menu, pretty self-explanatory. And then of course your player script, which handles you know, player setting the authority on the camera and the input, handle setting up NetFox. Uh, here's your rollback tick, which is enabling NetFox. Talked about that extensively in the last uh, NetFox stream. And of course, I have my states that are getting determined that will aid in the rollback solution. Other than the world stuff that I was just showing you, this is the bulk of what's going on is this player script, uh, your network manager, multiplayer manager, and the, the main menu scenes. So if you if you want to work on this, I think it's a decent starting point to build out, like I said, a, a match style or arena style or small dungeon game. I just kind of went nuts today and, and made a little scene so that if you want to jump in, you can have some fun with it right away or and add to this, remove to it, make it better. I'm probably going to as just like a little side project, just work on this as I go and uh, just build it out to uh, it make it look a little prettier because you know i just did this in one day and it looks a little rough but i think this is a fun starting point for you know a 3d multiplayer game and really anything that i've covered in the past and including this can be used in 2d as well uh at least all the networking stuff so it'll translate pretty well animation issues actually a problem Let's see if something else is going on yeah I, i'm not exactly sure but i'll push out a fix for that he should be transferring his his uh, animation um, and it is working on the other clients you can see. But I think I'll add to this. I think I'll add some RPCs and maybe some functionality like picking up boxes or um, I don't know if I want to do any gunfight stuff. Uh, I've kind of covered that in a previous video, but you know, if you guys want to see me do some additional functionality to this, I definitely want to do that. And I want to add on to this one because it's something I made um, and you know, I don't have to use somebody else's code or uh, project to build off of. And I think another thing I wanted to do and is really touch on databases. I, I think I want to start on that. I've get I've had a lot of questions about databases and how to use them. And I, I do have plans on covering that. Um, in my last stream I talked about how to deploy your projects to W4 games, which is in beta. Um, it's a really like all inclusive first class citizen for deploying and managing um, really anything you would need for Godot backend, like deploying a dedicated server and scaling and having database and user authentication, that kind of thing. So they, they really have all this like one stop shop and uh, it even handles P2P um, and I think web builds. So um, but I'm not going to talk about that today. That's for another time and uh, you'll see that soon. And I'm sure I'll do more videos on that in the future. So yeah, this is pretty much it. I'm going to push out a bug fix for that. So keep an eye out for it. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to hop, uh, hop off today. I think I've got to a good stopping point. But again, if there's anything you want to see, uh, let me know. And I'd you know, love to look into that and see how we can build this out, uh, make some progress on it. All right. Well, thanks again. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for coming by.